Welcome to Adventures in Bonsai, Part 2. Um, that's the first video I've made in quite a while. I had some health issues and other things going on. I've really neglected my bonsai, uh, but I was trying to put the old videos back up because Google erased them all and wouldn't let me get them back, so they're kind of gone now, unless if you had them at home maybe, but other than that, they're gone. So I wanted to just uh, show you what's going on. Right now in Florida here, we've had a period where we had almost every single day heavy rainstorms in the afternoon or evening. And I didn't have to water my bonsai for months because of that. I came out today for the first time to have a look and I see the disaster that's going on just from lack of water. Maybe for the last three or four days they haven't gotten watered and that caused a big problem. So I'm just going to take you around a little show you what's going on, okay? This is my mahogany tree. It's one of my favorite trees. I guys to stand up a little here for you. And it'll be okay. I just had to give it a good watering. I also need the repot, and that's the first one I'm going to take care of. But otherwise, things here like my uh, palm tree, the coconut palm, uh, also needs to be cleaned up and straightened out. Uh, there's a lot of plants that need help here, like this one here. This could be an interesting plant once it it's positioned correctly. And likewise over here and you'll see plants with tons of uh, this artillery fern that I need to get rid of on all these plants. Uh, I just got some moss from my neighbor Bob so I can actually start to work again on this stuff. Uh, keep this moist and keep it healthy and we'll use it later. We'll take a look at it. Um, here's a plant that's been sitting on this table for quite a while. This ponytail palm. So I'll take care of that too, and other plants here. You'll notice there aren't too many plants left anymore. Here's a baobab tree. That's okay, winter's coming. This here is a Fuki NT. I'm hoping I can save it. I've had it for over 20 years, and uh, it just really got dried out. And these other plants here also will do well now that they've gotten some water, hopefully. And. Uh, Here's my uh, mimosa tree, which I'm really hoping comes back. I really like a mimosa tree. And this one I grew from seed. A lot of these I grew from seed. Um, these need to be cleaned up from this stuff here, this artillery fern. I get rid of it and put things back together. Uh, so that's what I gotta do. I gotta come out here and clean stuff off this one here may come back. It's got some live leaves on it. Maybe the good watering I gave it will start to come back again. And uh, you can see how few bonds I, I have here now, really. Um, but you can see that these here definitely need some help. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I'm going to pick one and we're going to start out with it. And I'll try and show you the basics, because I don't know if those videos are available to you now as to what's going on and how this system works with the sphagnum moss. By the way, here's a uh, nice little pineapple growing in the ground. Okay, I'm going to get to work. Well, first thing I'm going to do is get some sphagnum moss ready. I have an empty tub here that's been cleaned out. Here's my sphagnum moss. I buy these in bales on the internet. It's a lot cheaper than buying the little bags that they sell at the uh, uh, the hardware stores. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this stuff out carefully, try not to breathe in any of the, uh, uh, the airborne particles, hold my breath when I do it, put it into here, and then soak it with water. Okay, so there's the sphagnum moss in the container. I like to stand away from it from spraying it like this because I want the water that's going in to keep the particles from flying in the air. Now this stuff absorbs 10 to 20 times its weight in water. So it takes a while to really get this thing soaking good. So I want to come back when things are done. We're almost done. Okay, so we're still soaking this. And for those of you that don't know, I wrote a book about this system called the Sphagnum Moss Bonsai Method, an illustrated handbook. 
published by McFarlane in 2011, I think. It goes through all this stuff step by step and how to use this system. And I'm pretty sure you can get those books online, either at half.com or eBay or even from the uh, publisher, McFarlane.com. And, uh, you know, that could really help you a lot because it'll give you good advice with pictures and explanations. Now, even though I've been soaking this for a while, it's hard to tell because the water keeps getting absorbed by the sphagnum moss. But eventually, it becomes soaked, and that's fine. And you got to get in here sometimes and just mush it around a little. It's getting there. Okay, it's uh, soaking pretty well now. I'm going to stop this and start working. This mahogany bonsai was planted from a seed about 20 years ago. I got a bunch of seeds in the mail. They were real cheap. I had four of these growing. Two of these I kept as bonsai, and two of them I planted in the ground after they had been bonsai for about a year. Now this one, you see the size of it? Here's its sister tree. That's a mahogany tree, and that was planted, you know, the same seeds, the same time, and that's what happens when they grow in the ground without their roots being impeded by the pot. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. First of all, I've got this stuff here, these dead leaves and things, and things that I don't need here. Here's artillery fern, I wanna get rid of that. Pull this stuff out. That's pretty clean, basically, and I take it out of the pot. And the nice thing about working with the sphagnum moss bonsai method is, by not having soil, it's so much easier to work with. So what we're gonna do is here, I'm gonna show you how I go and take this and repot this, because really that's all it needs right now is that. It needs to be made a little firmer in there. There's too much wobble in it. So I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna cut about that much with the Ginsu knife. If you go to uh, flea markets and garage sales, you may find these. Dollar, two dollars, they're really worth it. They last forever and they're great for just cutting this stuff off. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little pad of sphagnum moss. I put it in the bottom to make up for the stuff I took out. I put this back in here, press it down good so there's contact, and I take more and I just put it in the sides as a buttress. And if you put it in one side like this, you'll feel tightening up and then come over to the opposite side and put it in. And then you see there's a couple empty spaces in here. Well, it'd be nice if we had some stuff in there, too. So sorry to keep going in front of you like that. I should have organized this a little bit better. Maybe I'll do it later. So now I'm just pushing this stuff into any empty spots. And don't be afraid to push as hard as you can and really stuff it down there and come over here and see what's going on on this side. It's a little bit loose over here, not much. And this tree will now be very happy and do very well. Now the question is, do I need to trim any of it? Well, let's see. Okay, I see this branch over here that looks like it might be dead. So all I'm going to do is take a look at it and see, see how it breaks. And it's breaking very dry. It's just snapping off. So this is dead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this. And cut this off a little if I have a decent clipper here. I'm going to cut it right over here. Ow! Ooh, okay. I also want to take off these dead leaves around here. I should move this stuff here out of the way so you don't have to see it. And I'm just going to go and clean up some of this dead stuff, some of the stuff that will be dying. And just give this a, a minor cleanup. And then I'll be back. So I'm just trying to make this thing look a little more tree-like and get rid of some of the stuff here that I don't like so much or that looks like it's dying. And that's all I'm doing, cutting off some of the ends of these so that'll make it grow better. You know, plants do better because they're, they've adopted to 
deal with winds and rains and storms that break them and animals that eat them. And when they get trimmed, they actually grow better and healthier. So you have to not be afraid of it because they will come back and grow nicer. Okay, so that's enough for this guy. He's saved. He'll be all right, or she'll be all right, whatever it is. Let's go do another one. Now, I do like to attach the, or protect these plants by putting bungee cords on them. And the question is, this one. Okay, what I'll do is if I have one that's too long, I just put knots in it. And that shortens it up. And then when I come around, just put one in one side. And on the opposite side, I put another one. Now it's pretty good. That helps keep the squirrels away. Because this is an important plant, I could even maybe do another one on here. This is just a little too loosey, goosey yet. So let me see what else I can come up with. I have these bungee cords here that I've been waiting to use. So I want to find one in here that possibly get out of here. Okay, so I found this cord, which will go around this way and hold it in place nicely. There it is. Now the squirrels can't knock this it This plant is a sea grape. It's a nice plant, but it's just dry as can be. And I'm going to try and save it here. I think I gave it enough water to save it. I think it'll be okay. It'll just take some time. I'll show you. Okay, I just want to give this a good soaking. Make sure it gets enough water down there. Now we're going to dress this plant up a little. I'm taking a piece of the moss I just got. I want to wash this off with the hose. Try and get most of the stuff out of there if I can. Now I'm going to take the moss. I can put it in whatever shapes I want by just tearing it apart. When you do this, it kind of looks like a nice little carpet of grass there. Let me get another piece. That's another small piece I just got. I'll clean this off also. Dead leaves. Push everything back in. You can use a little bit right over here. Here's another little piece. I'm going Okay, so far so good. But I see this moss growing up the trunk of the tree. It looks good, you know, but it's a dangerous thing actually. Because what happens is water gets caught under there and starts to rot the tree out. So I'm going to take a popsicle stick, or sometimes I get these from my doctor, the throat depressors, you know, whatever, tongue depressors. And if you just come down here with the wood on the wood, it'll scrape this stuff off. I'll let you see your trunk again. And also, save your problems later from a tree trunk that's rotting out because the stuff was on it. So let's take it out, maybe put some of it down here. Turn around, see what else is going on. Just kind of scrape it off lightly. I'm not pressing too hard, but it comes off pretty easily. Now I'm going to hopefully find this. Wash this thing off. Okay, now, what to do about these leaves? A lot of these look like they're going to be dropping off and dying, and I think I'll probably maybe just get a couple that I see are really bad here now. Because I don't want the tree trying to save itself by saving leaves that are going to be dying on it. Um, but they may come, this one here looks pretty bad, but there's a nice new one growing up here, so, you know, 
I'm not afraid of cutting this stuff off. I know it will come back. Like I said, in nature, trees expect this kind of stuff. And they're designed to handle it by growing back. And uh, so that's, there you have it for now with this one. Okay, I'll put the seed grape back. This here is my mimosa tree. I got seeds from somebody in California. And I grew this from a seed. And what I want to do here is see what's going on inside. I want to cut some of this stuff off because this stuff is going to be just dying anyway. So, may as well get rid of it. See, but this other thing here still has greenery on it, so it may come back on that spot. Getting rid of all this dead stuff. You say, wow, that looks pretty terrible. Yeah, it sure does. But this bends, see, this bends. This is okay, it's alive. Come back. I'll clean up some of the stuff in here, get rid of some of the stuff, because you don't want dead leaves laying around. It's a source for bacteria and fungus to get into the plant. And, okay, let's see what's going on with this. We can get this out of here. There you go, I love this method. Now look at this, this is what you call a root-bound plant. Needs, needs to get rid of this stuff. And all I want to do is cut this off. Voila. Okay, this is just uh, good stuff in there. This has uh, some moss, some surface moss. There's different kinds of moss. Surface moss is the ones we want on to make it look like a lawn on top of it, and sphagnum moss is the stuff we want it to grow in. Okay, now I'm going to push this down into there a little. I got this nice little branch coming up here, which I'll leave. And I'm just making this plant more secure. It's going to love it when it gets nice and tight in there. Its roots are going to do real well as they spread out, trying to find new areas to populate. Okay. Now, I'm going to come and get some moss and put it on. Some moss. It's got sand on the bottom. I'm going to wash that off. It holds together pretty well, the moss. I'm going to put this piece right over here. And when you're putting moss in, you want to press down until you see water coming out of it. So you know there's good contact between the surface moss and the sphagnum moss. That way it'll start to grow on top of it. Now moss itself is a very interesting plant. It's a bryophyte. It has no roots. So it gets water just by being in contact with water. Clean this one off. Like I said, you can edit it by just taking pieces off as you go along. I just see little spots here that need a little touch up piece of moss on it, get rid of the dead leaves. Okay, that looks pretty good. Get this stuff here off. And the moss will spread to any spots you don't get it to. So here we go. It's a sad looking tree. It's one of my favorite trees. And I think it'll come back and be okay now that I want to start taking care of it better. Okay, well that's it for today. Uh, I put my sphagnum moss cover back on the container here. So it'll stay good for quite a while like this. I can use it when I need to. I'll put my tools away, then I want to see if I can figure out how to edit and post this video. Okay, have a good day everybody. Bye-bye.